Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Frank Torian, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 as we are playing as Germany. So, before we get started in today's episode, I would like to know, let you guys know something I just found out today. You know, we usually take that little vacation, usually less than two weeks, to be like eight to ten days. And we'll just take those days off where we won't work, we don't do YouTube, we just kind of relax typically. We don't, usually don't go anywhere because we never have the money to go anywhere. And that'll likely be the case this year. We still got to see uh, whether or not we're going to be able to go anywhere. But usually we don't go anywhere. Last time we went somewhere was back in 2017. That was the last time we took a vacation as a family somewhere. So usually we just kind of take the, the time off, go hiking, hang out around the house, do stuff like that. Stuff that's free or cheap. Uh, so we always take that little bit of time every year. And this year we were slated to do it in September. That's when we had planned on doing it. Uh, but unfortunately something happened with my wife's work. And uh, with her as the manager and stuff, she kind of has to... She has to take her vacation this month, essentially. Uh, I don't want to go too much into it because this is already going to be a shorter video because I don't have a, as much time to record today because I'm starting really late uh, because my wife and I were, were talking about this for the last couple hours because, again, this is like last minute. It really sucks. It's going to be sometime this month. It might be as early as next week, guys. But yeah, very last minute. I don't even have the exact date just yet, guys. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be like late next week, maybe, is when it might start. I, I don't even know for sure. She's still got to like figure it out with with her boss, the regional manager. But yeah, I'll go into it more another time when we got a little bit more time to talk about it. Maybe the, the last video we do before we go on our vacation. But yeah, we'll still do videos daily until we go on the vacation. And uh, yeah, I'll give you guys a date once I know. Uh, but yeah, it's just last minute and, and it kind of sucks because uh, I was kind of looking forward to having what we were, we were pl making some plans for September. And it uh, looks like that won't be happening now. So, uh, you know, it is what it is, guys. There's nothing you can really do about it. It's just part of being a manager. You know, when she took that new, uh, she got that promotion. Got to kind of make sacrifices sometimes. Uh, we need more oil. I don't really like uh, having to trade for this much. Yeah, you can see we're incredibly short. I'm not entirely sure why that is either. We have less submarines. I guess it's all the planes. Uh, the tanks moving would probably cause some issues too. A lot of these units are not moving around right now, guys. And the reason why these units aren't moving around is because they're all messed up. Uh, I moved these here. Uh, but they're all messed up because, you know, France is in our faction. And so they're just kind of thrown off with that. All right, so we did get the landing craft. We're going to continue getting the uh, passive bonuses here. A lot of passive bonuses left to get. These are all the, the 44 techs. Uh, we can get something for the torpedo reveal chance. That'd be helpful. Yeah, we'll get that. And... We're not going to expend the experience because that's all we have. Could reduce the the research time by quite a bit, but uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to because I don't know how much experience we're going to get here. I guess we won't be designing more ships for some time. I suppose we could have. Yeah, we could have gotten it. We'll do it for the next next tech. Uh, we got plenty of text to get and use that experience on. Uh, we do have another operative that can be recruited. Okay, we're getting lots of operatives uh, because of all these countries that have joined. I don't even know how many we have now. What is this, uh, the seventh one? Yep, the seventh one. Since we have such a large faction, all these small, tiny powers in here. So I guess we'd want to go with a French person next. Yeah, I think you'd want to go with a French character here. So we got an infiltrator, tough lady, a linguist, a demolition expert. Oh, that's uh, American, so that's not really a choice. So yeah, if we want to get a French person, we'd go with, uh... I just want to go with her because she's tough, but uh, I think the infiltrator will be a little bit more useful. Renee. So we have one agent sitting here, the one we just got. We have the one in in uh, the Soviet Union. We have two over here. I guess we could build intel on the French for when we go to war with the French, but it might not be possible because, yeah, they're in the faction. So we can't do that yet. Hmm. We'll just keep them around here for right now. Because uh, soon we should be able to get the French out of the faction. Uh, they're going to be finishing up their focus here in a few days. And then they'll, they'll change over to communism. And then in August 24th, we can kick them out of the faction. So we did move our fleet over to here, guys. And that's likely been some of the, the reason for the, the, sub, uh, excuse me, the fuel uh, reduction here. You know, or the increased fuel usage, I should say. Because we have our fleet that is now able to operate over here. We have the uh, destroyers that are patrolling there. And you know what? I don't think we need to have them patrol over here anymore. So let's go ahead and pull that back. Just give them less areas that they need to patrol. Yeah, they don't need to patrol right there. We'll just patrol these two areas here. 
And that's right, we have the submarine threes. Let's wait till they have another one before we actually put them out there. So I've got a roll and they're lonesome. So yeah, they're not deploying yet, so I'm guessing that we haven't detected anybody. Yeah, I'm not detecting anybody. It's just all freight convoys going through here anyways. So yeah, I was hoping to fight the British fleet there, but if they don't have any ships, let me just take a look if they got anything. Yeah, they don't have any ships operating there. Okay. Uh, but we are continuing to bomb their fleets. We got that shared R&D programs as well, so that's going to help. Not so much uh, us, because I assume we're ahead of everybody in our faction with technology, so that won't help us much, but it'll help all of our allies out. Uh, other options would be to uh, go to get this production bonus, get the head of time bonus for the research on uh, the atomic research. So that'd be good. Air innovations is always helpful as well. And then these are the, the options for the military factories. And then we got the dockyards. All right, well, I think we'll go ahead and get the poor technical know-how, or, or pool technical know-how, and then allow us to produce quite a few different types of equipment much easier. And does this, yeah, every nation in the faction will get it. Yeah, so this does go to every, every country, though we might not want to do that until the French are out of the faction. August 24th, yeah, we'll have it that in time, as long as we get them kicked out in August. They're now communist, by the way. And so, yeah, we're going to kick them out as soon as we can, guys. Again, August 24th, I think, is the uh, the date here. Oh, they're no longer in the faction. Oh, they've been put back in the common turn. Yeah, because they're not at war with us. Okay, so it fixed itself. We didn't have to kick them out. All right, awesome. Yeah, the event fixed it. Uh, so that's good. I didn't even think about that fact, that since they're not at war with us, it would, they would automatically go back into the common turn. All right, excellent. So that should fix the issue we have here as well. Let me just make sure they're all... Yeah, you can see they're all starting to move now. Uh, before, they were not going to the front because they're confused with us having a front. Yeah, we should just take all these guys. But having a front with our, our ally. All right, so let's go move these units over to here. And let's build some more light tanks. I'll build some more of these guys as well. We actually have most of the stuff for them. Uh, but we haven't cha finished changing up the design yet. We still have to get more mechanized. You can see most of these are not mechanized, actually. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that and start getting more mechanized over here. Every little batch of experience we get, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, looks like we're having some success bombing those British ships again. Yeah, a couple of destroyers sunk there. Might want to take a look at how we're doing on, on bombing the fleet. Okay, French communists take over. Yeah, more destroyers sunk there. Now, every little destroyer doesn't really matter, uh, sinking each little individual one, but eventually, you sink enough of them. Oh, look at all those war propaganda decisions. Yeah, eventually you'll sink enough of them. Do we want to do this? We still have stuff we want to get. So yeah, we're just going to say don't notify us of that. And also, I never did update this, the medium tanks. Let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, eventually you, you sink enough uh, of the destroyers and then they can't even uh, provide enough screening to stop your uh, your submarines from wrecking them. Uh, there's really nobody to trade that's an ally and doesn't require cowboys. Oh, well, wait a minute. Belgium has one factory worth. I'll trade with them. Yeah, losing a ton of planes over here, guys. It's no good. They have a lot more fighters here now. But we do have 950 here, the 800 we're providing, and then like 150 from our allies. Let's take a look at our, our stockpiles. We do have more close air support that we could use for bombing purposes. Uh, so let's see where we might want to put those. Kind of help us out. I guess there's really nothing but the Italian fleet to, to bomb. But let's just see where they're at. They're over here. There are some over here, but we haven't bombed them yet. There's some right there as well, but might not be able to reach that unless we use tactical bombers. Do we have any tactical bombers? Uh, just the 23. Okay, so really none there. Could help bomb this area because there's enemy planes or enemy ships there. So yeah, let's use the the Greek air base. Place these close air support over here, and we'll just kind of move these around if need be. See where we can have some success bombing the enemy fleets. Yeah, we'll keep them in the English Channel even though we're losing a lot of planes here. It's the only place we've really been sinking the destroyer, so I think it's worth it. Remember the points that you get for the uh, 
the war uh, the war participation war score whatever you want to call it uh, first sink in the ships which if you hover over this we've gotten seven points from sunk enemy ships how many how many points you get for each enemy si uh, ship sunk is based off of how much manpower is on that ship so the destroyers which don't use very much manpower do not give you very much points uh, the Dutch East Indies are doing horrible we could send troops over there but we don't control the sea so it would be risky and I don't think we'd save them in time either Japan is just just devastating everybody here in the Pacific uh, theater I mean they're just doing fantastic against both the communists and us uh, they've invaded the French Indochina here is so now they're in trouble yeah they've taken over much of the Dutch East Indies and of course in this campaign Australia is in the same faction as them so they don't have to invade Australia or New Zealand for that matter all right, I finished up this one here. I didn't know how to pronounce that, so I won't even try. Uh, we got the research bonus to go down the Modern Blitz Krieg line, which that is the one we're going. Uh, if you didn't know, Desperate Defense is mainly for manpower. You do get the Guerrilla Tactics down here and damage to enemy garrisons in our states occupied by the enemy. This is, you know, you're losing. This is the route you go if you're losing. You're just completely out of manpower. Uh, this is the route you typically want to go, and that's the route we're going to be going. This can give us some organization for the tanks. And uh, also for all the infantry and motorized mechanized, basically more organization is what we're getting there. Some some convoys over here. Don't know if these are troop convoys or I don't, I don't see any invasions. Yeah, no invasions. Looking to actually find the the, the battles here. To see what we're sinking. I assume that they're not troop convoys. I don't know why troops would be coming through here unless they were going to do an invasion. Uh, yeah, we can't even see what those are. Oh, you know what? That almost looked like it was a troop convoy. It's just going so fast. So the Republic of Malaysia has been capitulated, uh, and thus they are government in exile. With some legitimacy here. Had a little bit of equipment left, not much. Uh, but these are all countries that we're trading with that we're losing over here. So we're losing our rubber supplies. And so our faction's going to be in trouble now because we rely on those rubber, uh, rely on all the rubber over there. We're going to have to trade with Siam instead to get the rubber that we need, but frankly, this is not a long-term solution, guys. Yeah, there's nobody to trade with for uh, rubber. All right, so we're in trouble. Uh, so essentially, we need to really step up production of the synthetic refineries. We're going to need a lot of these. And we're probably going to want to put them up close to the top there. Because, yeah, we need we need rubber. All right, we can build. Oh, yeah, we're just going to build a ton of these. And just, uh, we still need steel as well. So let's go ahead and put these here. And prioritize them over the military factories. Obviously the military factories are going to require rubber, so we want to get these first. And this will also help with our fuel problems. Now we might want to take a look and see if we are having any issues trading our fuel. Okay, we're good on all the other resources, this is just the rubber. Uh, the Dutch were successful in taking over all this territory here. Uh, so they took over Venezuela and the British territory that was here. So yeah, they were successful in that effort. And let's see what we sunk here. More destroyers? Yeah, more destroyers. And more of these convoys here. Again, we should dominate in this sea region here. This one sea region will be the one that we dominate in, since we have our full fleet there. Just try and engage the enemy while they're there, but they're not coming in this, this region. We'd have to move over to here, which I just don't feel comfortable with uh, the control of the skies that we currently have. Well, they don't have any planes here now in the English Channel. So we could bring our fleet over here to try and gain control of the, the channel. There's that destroyer sunk. It looks like they might be staying out of the... Oh, never mind, take that back. 186 ships here. Not yet, guys. I feel like our ships just aren't ready. Uh, we, you know, we have only one carrier. And so they're just going to be outnumbered and oops, that's right we're still trying to build another one of those we do need more dockyards too always more dockyards are needed I'm gonna make sure that all the troops are currently training here oh yes that's right we need to like figure out if these fronts are good against the Soviets here yeah looking good they're not even on uh, the front defending it because they know they don't have a uh, uh, you know, we don't have a war goal on them, so we can't even declare war on them. We'd have to justify one first. So there's two ways of doing this. If we are fine going with an offensive war so that we can get involved uh, with the war against the communist, 
If we if we're gonna do an offensive war, which again I prefer to do defensive, but if we're gonna do an offensive war uh, against them, then there's two different options. Uh, one, we can go through the focuses, so that's essentially 70 political power because you're spending 70 days to get this here, the strike at the source. So 70 days to do it, 70 political power. But the cheaper way to do it would just be to justify our war goal, guys. Uh, and I mean, we looked at this once against France. And, oops, I gotta do the conquer first. It's six political power in 30 days. So uh, it's 40 days quicker and quite a bit cheaper political power wise. So that's obviously the better method uh, for us to get a war goal. And, and it wouldn't take very long. So yeah, we could do that at any point, guys. Again, I'd prefer they attack us. I don't know how long to give it. Because yeah, I would like to have us have a three front, uh, a three way war. And in order to have that, you know, we obviously got to go to war against the uh, the communists sometime soon. So I would I'd like to see if they declare war on Finland, uh, but they haven't yet. And it does seem like the communists are trying to avoid conflict with our faction. So I think we're going to go with the air doctrines, guys. Go with this battlefield support. We do have a research bonus for it, so we can get a little bit quicker. Now, none of these are going to help us in the naval war until that one. Air superiority, mission efficiency. That'll help us. Neither one of these would, though. So yeah, let's go to grab it. Uh, could it make it even quicker? If we want to use our air experience, but we will not. Uh, let's go to get the equipment updated here, the medium self-propelled artillery. Mm, I'm not sure what this is alerting us over. Doesn't seem important though. Uh, we do now need more rubber because Siam doesn't have as much to trade for. So yeah, I don't think we'll be able to get the rubber uh, unless we like just traded for where we got ripped off. We, I suppose we'll have to do that so we don't get hit with the production too hard. Just kind of get ripped off for a little while. Just get as much as we can here until we can get those uh, uh, get the refineries built. And this is not an event. Yeah, this is not an event from the mod. This is an event from the base game. A Mexican entry into the Central European Alliance. Franklin Delano Roosevelt has sponsored a request from Mexico for entry into the Central European Alliance. Whether Mexico seeks mutual protection or foreign expansion is unknown, but Mexico's oil is a lucrative asset to have on our side. So we say we will sponsor Mexico's entrance into the CEA, or we say we have other plans for them, and yeah, we're going to do this. So Mexico will now be in our faction. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, we're still waiting for this mission to get done here. When is that going to be done? Looks like very soon. 5th October. I'm trying to steal those those blueprints. Okay, so Metz goes now in the faction. They place France, I suppose. Uh, and so they've been pulled into the conflict. We haven't bombed anybody over here. Let me just see if they, they still have ships here. Again, yeah, we're going to move these. Yeah, they do have ships there. Yeah, we're going to move the planes that are there around just based on which areas we could see uh, some success. All right, so we do have two here, so let's go ahead and get them out there, and we're gonna do the uh, we'll do the shark icon here, and give them the uh, convoy raiding. Not losing submarines in these areas, so we should be able to rebuild our numbers here, since uh, you know, obviously our numbers aren't, aren't doing well. And let's see what we sunk here. We lost planes. That's what happened. All right. Uh, we do have a decision available with just the war propaganda ones. But yeah, we're absolutely good on war sports. Not really necessary. Uh, what is the other decision that's, that's available? Okay, so these are down here with uh, Malaysia. We can increase their legitimacy with that one. Looks like that this one does the same. It's all for those government and exile decisions. Uh, we do get another dockyard. Uh, let's go ahead and get this placed. So we're building more submarines, and I think we're going to put this into to submarines, guys, because we got to replace our, our submarine fleet, uh, because we took such heavy losses. And Siam has even less to trade for. Now, is Siam under attack right now? Or are they just changing up their laws? Yeah, so we're just really hurting on the rubber now, guys. Get a little bit more here from Brazil. And the Dutch East Indies. That's it. That's all we got, guys. So still short 11 rubber. We're gonna go ahead and make sure uh, Metsco comes into the, the war fully. And what is this about? Uh, American submarines. 
So the Americans have brought their submarines over here to help us out. We did get the construction. Let's go after the excavation next. And yeah, I just don't know the the uh, Soviets will ever be declaring war on on Finland. They might not. Let's go and take a look at our unit situation. See if we can build some more. We do have plenty of manpower here. Let's go and deploy those guys out there so we can get them training. And same thing with these medium tanks here. All right. So are those the first medium tanks that we got actually done and, and training? Looks like it. All right, let's go and take this unit here, figure out where we want to put them. Uh, make sure that we have full armies for the blue army and then full coverage here for this army. Yeah, it looks like we have at least one for each province, but we're going to put one more in there. Get them up to 14 because I think we should be good on the French front. Uh, still really short on the fuel, though, guys. But again, that should be getting better. Uh, also, if we got certain techs, we can improve our, our fuel efficiency as well. Uh, we can take a look and see if we're not getting... Yeah, we're getting the full fuel here. I suppose we can always trade for one more worth. Oh, we got one division from Exiled Malaysia. Uh, is that under our control? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, it is. It's right here. All right, so we have one unit. Uh, we'll probably just put them into this army here for defending the uh, the ports here. Move them over there. Uh, the British haven't really done any naval invasions of us. They've been focusing on other areas. We got an ace pilot promoted. Excellent. Uh, we might want to take a look and see if we have any like spare ace pilots that perhaps could be assigned. Um, yeah, we actually have somebody here. Okay, so yeah, just trying to get control of the skies here, just losing a stupid amount of planes. See how we're doing on the stockpile for the fighters. Fighters are good. We can actually get another air wing out there. So that'd be helpful. Yeah, looking good. So we're producing faster than we're losing, so that's what's important. Uh, so let's go ahead and get another fighter wing over here then, guys. Uh, we'll put them right here. Just duplicate one of these. And uh, hopefully you should fill in those numbers there. And although he's not, I thought we had, let me just take a look here. Huh, maybe maybe they just filled in now. There we go, just took him a little bit of time. All right, so it does look like we're, we fully control the English Channel. I'm very, very tempted to send our fleet over there. You can see it's a, a big fleet here though, so it is a little bit risky. We are getting some of those destroyers sunk, so that's good. Let me see how we're doing on bombing them. We're 80% here for the battleships. Hmm. No carriers here that I'm seeing. Yeah, we're doing good on getting those battleships damaged. What do we have here? Uh, we got another light cruiser. We put that in there. That gives us 45 ships here. Let's let them get the, the one sh uh, light cruiser there. And I think we're going to send them into battle here in the English Channel, guys. And the Dutch East Indies has been defeated by the Japanese. They capitulated. And we have a contested election. Uh, the With the upcoming election, people are beginning to question the capability of current administration to pursue the ongoing war. Germany has suffered greatly, not really, uh, and popular opinion has turned against those who seem to be leading our nation to defeat. I don't know how we're being defeated, but uh, while our people are determined to see the war to the end, they would rather see another government ending it. So we can say the crisis of trust is highly unfortunate, losing little power and stability, or we can say let the political landscape shift to get the people united, in which case you'll see uh, fascism and communism increase while we'll gain little power and stability. Well, we don't want that to be increased. We do have a little bit of a democracy to, to play around with here. It's fine. Yeah, we'll do that so we don't lose the, uh, the stability, guys. I prefer to gain some stability. We can take that down eventually. Uh, so we did uh, sink two more destroyers there, one right there and one right there. So five more destroyers. All right, excellent. And we can get another operative. We're getting like a stupid number of operatives. Soviet Union wants us to give them non-aggression packs so they won't have to worry about us anymore, but they're not gonna get that. Uh, let's go based on which one would be the best one to get here. Uh, got another infiltrator. I guess we'll do the other infiltrator here, guys. And then we have enough operatives. We can go against two countries at the same time. So let's go ahead and start working against uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, though we might be able to do that mission now. 
yeah, let's let's take a look at the missions, guys. Let's see what we can do against the Soviets here. So we're stealing blueprints from the British. We, you know what? We could help out against Japan. I almost want to help out against Japan uh, because we could increase their resistance in all the territory they have. I guess we'll just focus on the Soviets and the British for right now. All right, so just looking at the missions that we can do against the Soviets, we can capture their cipher, we can infiltrate their administration. I think we are already have the... Oh, we got to redo the British one. It looks like they all got more upgrades to their uh, agency, so we got to do redo the British one. Or I think we're, we've been working on the British one. Uh, 425 days. The Italian one's 15 days. The Soviet Union is currently 200... Or, excuse me, 126 days. All right, well... I guess we can capture uh, the cipher to the, the Soviets. I don't know which one we're currently working on. Okay, so yeah, it looks like we're working on them all at the same time. Is that right? Yeah, I want to say we're working on them all at the same time. So that's what slows it down. So you probably want to do one at a time. So let's do the British first, and then we'll just try and capture the, the Soviet one. Now, how long does that one take? 131 days, you need two agents, and you need to be at 40%. Yeah, we'll try and capture their cipher. Why not? I don't think I've ever done this mission. And we'll just send off the two characters we have, I suppose. Yeah, we currently have him in Moscow. Well, this is the guy. This is the new guy. We'll send him off. We have, what, two in Britain right now? So let's go and send... We want to keep Patrick there. So we'll send this guy instead, the seducer. Seducer Linguist. Commence that when ready. Alright, excellent. Alright, and then here in October we'll find out the results of that other mission against the British. And we have to say we don't want to know about any of this stuff right now. Although we can send weapons for the Indonesian resistance. What does this cost us? 526 infantry equipment. That's not bad. I think we should do that one. It is 50 political power though, so it does have a cost. Don't need to do these ones for the legitimacy. But yeah, I could definitely see doing this one. Why can't we do this one? Oh, they need uh, 25 legitimacy to be able to do it. All right, well, I think this one's more useful. Uh, they have more territory anyways. So yeah, let's do that, guys. 50 political power, 120 days. And just try and make the occupation of all that territory for the Japanese more difficult, is what I'm thinking. It's one way we can kind of help out with all of our operatives. You know, in addition to, like, stealing techs and the normal stuff. So, yeah, I, I really don't think they're going to attack Finland, guys. I think we're probably going to have to attack them. Right, so I guess what we'll want to do is, is get let's get these medium tanks done so we can put them onto the front here. And then we'll want to split up this blue army here once we have that done. Split it up into two different tank armies. Rommel can be in control of the, the new one we make. Then have one here on the eastern front to help push forward rapidly and one here on the western front. So that's the way we'll do it. And then keep these these armies currently the way they are. And uh, put any new troops that are done training, put them into this army here, trying to get them up to, to full size. Uh, we got the magnetic mines. Oh, is that the tech we, uh, we stole? Yeah, that's the tech we just stole from them. Okay. That's probably not the tech I would have wanted, but, you know, I, I think we have all the techs that they have. All right, so that means we can now do a new mission and let's infiltrate the civilian administration and we're gonna send we're gonna send Patrick there since he has that bonus and then let's go and send Vladimir as well try and get some of these guys leveled up and then we'll need a, a new agent uh, to cover London here uh, so let's just see who's sitting at home uh, so we got her, so she can come to London. Make sure we keep our intel high. And then Granny, we're going to send Granny to the Soviet territory. Send her over to Stalingrad. And then we'll just keep him here uh, for right now, because we're going to need him for new missions. We are missing equipment. Missing equipment production. What is it that we're missing? You know really have over that tells you what you're missing. I don't think we are missing anything. Unless I deleted a line or something. Yeah, we'll just dismiss that. 
All right, so we got that focus knocked down. So now we're able to produce, uh, what is this? Infantry equipment, light tanks, medium tanks, heavy tanks, and towed artillery. We can produce that all at a 5% bonus. So that'll be helpful. And that does apply to everybody. It's good we got France out before that happened because I don't know if it would have been taken from them. I think they would have kept it. All right, let's go ahead and go for the air one first and then we'll do the naval one. And we don't need to be notified of the emergency conversion. So let's just say we don't need to be notified of that. Now we still have one more to get here. Also we could change up, I mean, we're talking about changing up Theodore here. Uh, but I guess we still need him since we just lost democratic support, a bunch of democratic support, almost 10%. I think we're at 73% there, now we're at 63%. So yeah, we did lose a lot of uh, support there due to that one uh, election event. So that was pretty negative overall. Uh, but yeah, what we're gonna do is uh, just wait until we have those tanks trained, and then we'll just declare war. Uh, it gives the Soviets some time to maybe attack Finland so that we could be in a, a defensive war. But yeah, I don't think they're going to, guys. Uh, you see the Italians are having success here in Italy. Now their entire government is in Italy. Uh, they just lost part of that desert there. So they might be getting pushed back here. Uh, Sweden has successfully invaded Egyptian territory. All right, so we also got a, a new leader, exiled leader there. So yeah, they've been successful here. It looks like the Americans are also helping. But we're not gonna get involved in Africa, guys. We'll let our allies do that. And I think we're gonna go ahead and move the, the ships over now, guys. I, I said we were gonna do this before and I forgot. Uh, so let's go ahead and stop where we're blocking access here. Open it up through the English Channel. It means our convoys will go through there as well. And then we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we get these ships out there. We won't move our submarines into that area, I don't think. Although I guess it helps, anything helps, I suppose. We'll move the submarines into there, and then we're also gonna move this fleet over here as well. We'll see what happens, guys. It's risky, because they're gonna be outnumbered, but we'll have the uh, the air support. But they could also move planes over there, now that we're uh, you know, put, bringing our fleet out. And another exile division has arrived. Okay. Let's continue to put the exile divisions over here. Help us cover that area for us. So yeah, we'll see what happens, guys. We'll see if we end up uh, engaging the British fleet here. So our submarines, are, at the very least, are engaging them. I don't know where that patrol fleet is. The patrol ships. You know, they have a, a wide area to cover with just one patrol. So it might take them a while. Uh, the Philippines has just been defeated as well. The Japanese are just kicking butt over here. But again, I'm not going to get involved in this until after we've involved, uh, until after we invaded the Soviet Union, France, and Spain. I think that should be our focus. Uh, being here is really going to hurt the the British now because they got to get their their troops and supplies across because they have just invaded Brittany. And of course, we're going to get all these leaders as well. These exiled leaders, some of them can be pretty darn good. Uh, 10 convoys sunk here now that we have our fleet. So the fleet is out there and thus we were able to successfully sink a ton of convoys Most likely troop convoys Although that one's a freight one, so maybe not. I was just thinking that they're moving troops across here So good uh good victory for us there guys Yeah, these are actually all freight convoys. Okay, so we we're just thinking freight convoys. I still helpful Hurting them on the supplies and the resources. Did lose the submarine pretty much as soon as we put these ships up here. We started losing them again. Yeah, I thought the submarines could help out here. So here's the British fleet. They actually do have two carriers here. Uh, we've done a little bit of damage to them. And the whole uh, fleet looks at least a little bit damaged. Just looking for the big battle. I think this is it here, guys. Here we go. Uh, so let's just turn this down a bit and we're going to watch it since we have like nothing else going on. Although... We're we'll to close it for a second because we need to get these military factories assigned. But I do want to watch that battle, so we won't play it until we get these done. Let's see what we want to get here. And it looks like the tanks. We need tanks, guys. Okay. So might want to pull back production on anything we don't need. And go ahead and step it towards some of the other equipment. We still need gun, uh, guns here, so might as well keep the 15 factories into that. Or what we could do is stick them down to 12, put those down into this equipment here. 
Yeah, but I think maybe one more into the medium self-propelled artillery. And then let's put a couple into the uh, the medium tanks. And then the, the mechanized as well. Put 12 into that. And then we need more planes too. Alright, just so we don't have to mess with this for a little while. Uh, but resources are again a problem, but there's really not much we can do about that, guys. Yeah, Dutchie Cindy's now has nothing to trade for. Um, I don't really want to trade with France. Yeah, I don't think that there's going to be any uh, resources here to trade for, guys. We're just going to be really hurting on rubber, unfortunately. So we really need to focus on uh, producing more rubber. Uh, tungsten, plenty of tungsten available for trade. Just got to figure out who we want to trade with. I guess it'll be the Americans. And then the steel. We're going to continue trading for steel as well. All right, so not enough there. This will trade with the United States. All right, so that looks good, except for the rubber, of course. Uh, but we are trying to deal with that. Currently working on uh, building all those refineries. And really, we need to start getting some of those techs. Some of those techs would help out as well, especially with the fuel, because you notice the fuel situations, as soon as we put our fleet out there, uh, we got hit, and I forgot about this battle here. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and trade for more fuel then. Uh, we would trade with Iran. Give them some more civilian factories. All right, so this is the naval battle. And as far as, you know, the, the bonuses up here at the top, uh, just looking at, yeah, he doesn't have any extra traits here. Uh, he does have the higher attack, same defense. Uh, their, their positioning is, he, he's better as well. It's their coordination here that is the same. He does have more useful traits for this particular battle. And, and he's the commander here because he's the uh, the highest ranking. So he is the one that's technically in charge of our submarines. But because of uh, him having a higher rank than the submarine unit, he's uh, you know actually in command of this, this full battle here. We've already sunk four of their destroyers and three of their convoys. So just watch and see what happens here. As far as like the actual uh, stats here, uh, with the, the depth charge attack, uh, we actually have a higher depth charge attack. I don't think they have any submarines over here. Uh, the anti-air, uh, we have much higher anti-air than they do. Uh, doesn't look like they have that many planes, though. Just a few coming off of the carriers. Uh, with the torpedoes, our torpedo attack is significantly higher than theirs. Uh, the heavy guns is likely where they're going to be a little bit more... Uh, they're not even really that close here, either. And then the light guns, we have a much higher score there as well. Uh, our position is better. So in every single stat here, it's better. And then you look at the, the screening efficiency and you see they're not properly screened either. So our torpedoes can hit those battleships and those battle cruisers and even the uh, the carriers. That carrier, in fact, right there looks pretty damn damaged. Yeah, they're fleeing. They're trying to get out of there. This is a victory for us. Nine destroyers sunk so far. 13, 14, 15. I mean, good God. We got a light cruiser sunk there. Yeah, this is going very, very well for us, guys. Yeah, they're trying to get out of there. We almost have the, the battleship and battlecruiser sunk, but it does look like they're going to get out in time. Nope, nope, we got one of the battlecruisers sunk. All right, so they were not able to get out of there in time. So this was a, a, a huge victory for us, guys. Look how many destroyers we sunk. Yeah, massive victory here. 30 destroyers, 11 light cruisers, a battlecruiser, so our first capital ships that we sunk of the war. Uh, we've lost a lot more planes than them. We had a lot more planes, though. And now their ships are going to limp away and probably take months and months to fully repair. So that was a huge victory for us guys in the sea. Very nice. Also a destroyer sunk right there. Alright, so these guys are going to go have to repair up. So yeah, they should all take off and repair. Uh, but which one will they repair to? We might want to make sure that we don't have anybody repairing in like these little ones here. Uh, you need to... There we go. Let's turn all these off. So they only repair in the bigger ones. Yeah, all these level ones. Now they're not going to come over here and repair, of course, but we'll just make sure that they're only repairing in the higher level ones, specifically those those level eight ones, the ones we want them to go to and repair. So it's going to take a little while to get the, the fleet fully repaired. Uh, we'll continue bombing their fleet, though. And it's going to take even longer for them to repair theirs because they took far more damage. And we're still sinking destroyers here. All right, so this is going well. All right, so he's going to retreat and go repair. Now, one of the unfortunate things about, you know, him not commanding is he's not getting the experience. 
Now he's not really close to getting 77% here. He's 77% to getting level 5. He's already level 5 though. Uh, so yeah, we really want him to be getting these. The traits and the ranked. Uh, getting ranked up. So that's kind of unfortunate. So we might want to pull our submarines out of here. And besides, we take losses all through here anyways. So let's go ahead and pull the submarines out. So they won't be there anymore. Just focus on this area here. Yeah, pull the submarines out and just have our, our main fleet there. So that they get the experience. It looks like they're already engaging. I thought they went back to repair. Apparently not. Alright, but this is that damaged fleet. So this is going to be a lot more ships sunk here. Yeah, already two capital ships. Two heavy cruisers, specifically. And a ton of destroyers. Got another light cruiser sunk there. Lost our own destroyer. I think that's the first surface ship we lost. And it was an early destroyer hole. So... Not much loss there. We sunk six heavy cruisers, guys. Three light cruisers and 34 destroyers. They're not doing well. Yeah, this is this is going horribly for the British. We just sunk two more of their heavy cruisers. Yeah, the naval wars is going terribly for them. Uh, just taking a look at what they got left, guys. Uh, so, I mean, because they have a lot of ships still. Uh, but they're down to 172. 172 ships. And of course, we didn't sink all those. They, they've they been engaging against the Americans, too, so they've probably done uh, quite a bit of work on sinking the British fleet. Uh, but, yeah, they're they're definitely significantly weaker. I still have two battle cruisers, 12 battleships, and five carriers. Uh, 13 heavy cruisers, so that's their capital ships. Uh, four submarines, so not much of a submarine fleet left. And 27 light cruisers and 109 destroyers. Uh, but overall, you can see that they do not have enough screens as it is to cover all of these these heavy ships so already they're having troubles with the screens and it's only 1941 so it's only a matter of time guys before our torpedoes are just wreaking havoc on the uh, the British capital ships so yeah, this is I'm gonna give them the manpower and stuff I don't think we're gonna do any of these right now guys it's all stuff we might do eventually uh, once we have all the, the other uses of our political power uh, done with uh, I suppose you could do like these ones so they get more manpower. We might want to do the resistance ones though. Let's get some air experience and stuff. We won't do that one, but we will do the resistance one. Anything to cause trouble for the Japanese. And we got plenty of, of uh, equipment to give them. I know it costs 25 but a little power, but I think that that one's uh, definitely worth the cost of doing a little bit early here. Uh, the fuel is a significant issue though. All these uh, planes and ships we got out there. Yeah, they're causing us some problems, guys. All right, so they should be going back to repair, though. Uh, they didn't take a, a whole lot of damage, though. Uh, the destroyer we lost is from this fleet here. Could always give them a, another destroyer from here, like a level 2 destroyer or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, overall, very, very good for these first two naval enga engagements against the British. Uh, we brought our fleet in, and they did uh, fantastic. Now, there's still the uh, Japanese fleet... The Italians might have ships as well, since normally they lose their whole fleet to the British, and they didn't this time. So the Italian fleet is probably comparable to the British now, or not uh, in quality, but in size. Probably somewhere around the, the same number, maybe sm slightly smaller. How about the Japanese? Let's take a look at them. They still have a huge fleet. Uh, how about the Americans? How have they done? They got a big old fleet as well. Okay. So that's the current uh, naval war situation. Uh, France, we haven't looked at them. I, I'm sure that they don't have many. Yeah, because they've been fighting the British for a time now. So yeah, they don't have many. I guess there's the Spanish. Sometimes they build a okay fleet. But yeah, they don't really. The Iberian powers don't really have much ships either. Okay. So yeah, our uh, efforts on, on building that fleet up, I think, were worth it. Already, uh, we've got the, the British in a bad position. We could probably do an, a naval invasion now, actually, because their fleet is so crippled. I bet we could successfully invade them. But all of our troops are set for the, this communist conflict. Again, what we're doing is just wait until we get these guys trained, and, and then we'll declare war on uh, the Soviet Union. Just get those guys trained up so we can get them onto the front. See how the Soviets are doing? Uh, they're still... Still looks like they're being pushed back. They have pushed back up along this front, though. Yeah, they have lost territory over here, though. But overall, it does start. It's starting to look more like a stalemate in that area, and, and a big part of that is probably because the Japanese have focused on conquering Indochina and Malaysia, you know, the Dutch East Indies here. 
So I think that's a, a big part of that. Uh, we do get those military police, and I think we're going to throw those... Well, we don't have enough experience, but as soon as we have enough experience, we'll put those into the MPs. And what do we want to get next? I think we really need to, to focus on getting these industrial techs over here. Fuel refining for the fuel and uh, the advanced rubber process. And that's the first one we're going to get because rubber is such a, a problem here, guys. Don't we have... We have a, a focus that also would grant us the synthetic rubber here. So this one here would just get us one refinery and we get a research bonus for synthetic resources. It's a 300% bonus so too, so you'd get it pretty, uh, pretty quickly. But yeah, this will give you two rubber. So yeah, I think that'd be helpful. And not just two rubber, but two rubber for every one of the refineries, I believe. And so yeah, that'd be that'd be big. I uh, sunk another light cruiser. All right, excellent. And it looks like the British naval invasion has been pushed back out of France, out of Brittany, which is a good thing because I don't actually want them here. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It does mean that the, the French are, are focused on pushing the invasion back. Got a heavy cruiser sunk there. So yeah, the British are not doing great in this these guys. So yeah, I think as soon as we invade France, some of our army will then have to go into Spain. But we could probably start setting up naval invasions of the British, because I don't think they're going to be able to stop us. And we want to do it earlier. Oh, we should be speeding this up. I realize we've been on speed 3 this whole time. I was wondering why it's taking so long to get these guys built. My bad, guys. Let's go through these, continue seeing how we're, we're doing on getting that Royal Navy destroyed. Losing a, a crap ton of planes, though, guys. A lot of planes. Let me just look at the stockpile for the planes. We are now running low on tactical bombers, so might want to put some factories into that. Uh, other planes are looking fine, though. So let's go ahead. Oh, it looks like we yeah, just don't have the resources. It's the rubber. Oh, no. We want to do tactical bombers. Yeah, we don't even have the rubber for them, so yeah, it's not. Uh, uh, they're not really producing anything. Let's go to move these planes. They've had no success here, uh, so let's move them over to Crete and see if we can't engage anybody in the Met. And well, you know what? I was gonna say in the Mediterranean here, but yeah, it's there's no planes or no ships in the area. Yeah, you can see there's none. All right, so I'm not entirely, entirely sure what happened to the Italian fleet. But I guess we'll just move them over to where we have some success. Uh, put more bombers over here would be useful. So we'll just put them over here. Put more uh, nail bombers out there. Uh, or, you know, technically close air support. Put them out there and bomb more of that British fleet where we're having success. Uh, I did engage a convoy up there. I imagine they're... Well, you know, I don't, I don't really know what is coming through here, honestly. Because, yeah, they can't trade with any of these countries because they're at war with everybody. Yeah, so they're not trading anywhere up here, so I don't know why they would need any convoys going through there unless they shut off access to here and here or something like that and they're having to go all the way. Well, yeah, that wouldn't make sense either. So I guess if they had to go... Yeah, I have no idea. I'm trying to do the, the logic here, but why would convoys need to go through there? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but you get two more divisions from the Philippines. Again, let's just keep them over here. Protecting our, our ports. And we can even tra train these guys up, I suppose. Uh, we're not been attacked by the British. They really don't have the ability to do naval invasions right now. Uh, they are attempting to invade, or probably the Japanese are attempting to invade Atu Island. Same thing with Alaska. So this is all American territory that's under threats of the Japanese. Yeah, same thing here. The Japanese are having a lot of success over here. So while we're dominating in Europe, yeah, Japanese are kind of dominating Asia right now. Kind of control everything at the moment. So I just need to get those guys finished up here. And I'm guessing our fleet just went back out because the fuel is once again an issue. Yeah, imagine the fleet might be out here patrolling once more. Alright, so we got some, some light cruisers sunk there. Let's see what happened over here. Uh, a lot of submarines lost for only one destroyer. Okay. Uh, only one of those were our submarines, though, so it's not that big of an issue. Uh, we do have another submarine done building. Let's go ahead and we're going to actually get another task force for that, so we'll wait until it gets a, a partner for the Raiden. Uh, we did put another dock guard into those submarines, so they're going to be building a little bit quicker here. And let's see how we're doing on getting these. We're about to get a few more constructed here. We don't have as many civilian factories as I thought, but we do have four full lines going. And then, uh, part of the, the fifth one. 
So just trying to get that rubber situation dealt with. I uh, got another light cruiser sunk there. Excellent. I imagine we're getting a good number of points from this. And in fact, this is actually going to have to be the end of the episode, guys. Uh, we'll get this dockyard assigned somewhere. And I'm probably into probably into the submarines, I'm thinking, since uh, we have been taking losses there. Or we could do a, another one into the uh, support cruisers. I suppose we can do more into the support cruisers. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll take a look, see how these guys are on their training. We got three of them done. Excellent. Uh, let's see how many we need. Oh, yeah, right, we still need a whole bunch into this army. And we'll just, like, decrease the, the size of the blue front and then increase the size of this kind of orange or whatever color this is. Orangish, brownish, reddish color. Uh, increase the size of their front. All right, excellent. So yeah, still just waiting on these tank units, and then we'll declare war, guys, as soon as we have those. We'll split the uh, tank army up, put some over here and some over here, and declare war on the communists. Again, just trying to give them a chance to, to attack Finland or anybody else, for that matter, Iran. Uh, if they attacked Iran, that would work as well. But I don't think they're going to because they're in trouble here. But sometimes the AI does. They're known for you know declaring war even when they really shouldn't be, uh, and you know adding new powers into the, into the war against them. But the AI is infamous for doing that, so... They might still do it, uh, but I don't think so, guys. I think we're going to have to play a war on them, unfortunately. And it'll be an offensive war. Uh, but yeah, we'll be doing that next episode. Uh, before we end this one, let's go and take a look at the casualty situation. We did lose a little bit of war participation as we've just been sitting here. Uh, we do get a lot of points from the sunk enemy ships, but I think it's everybody's casualties are going up. Yeah, 194,000 here for the United States. Uh, so they've got a lot of casualties. And, of course, the, the common turns out 4.35 million casualties 36 percent of the war participation here for soviet union 20 percent for france so the, the common turn has a lot of the war participation unfortunately we need to bring them down to size declare war on them and hurt them and uh our side doesn't hasn't taken a lot uh with the exception of over there in the pacific theater where these three have taken pretty high casualties. Our own casualties is only sitting at 15,000 because obviously they're not fighting anybody. That's the same as it was the last episode. Uh, we're doing the casualties to them. We lost a few ships, but yeah, not really much this episode. Uh, looking at the enemy, let's see how much damage we've done in this convoy sinking. Uh, nothing really the Japanese. We did sink some of their ships, but yeah, obviously not enough to, to get registered on here. Let's take a look at... The British. Uh, 947,000 casualties of the British, and we've done 64, about 65,000 of that, so not much. Uh, the French did the majority of those, as did Spain. The Soviet Union's done quite a bit as well. Uh, against Italy, uh, you know, we did the 88,000 casualties of them. Alright, so that's the current situation. Honestly, we're really only helping in the sea and the, uh, the air right now until we uh, get these these communists brought into the conflict. So yeah, next episode we'll invade the Soviet Union and France. Uh, after our, our trip's done in France, we'll invade into Spain and then Portugal. So just start pushing forward here, and then we'll also be attacking the Soviet Union simultaneously, you know, pushing forward on this front here. And as far as other countries this might involve, I guess the, the Dutch can expand their territory here. This little patch of territory here that's in French hands. The Americans will be able to gain. Uh, but Canada is still not in the war against us, so the Americans have not been able to invade them just yet. Yeah, they have wisely stayed out of the conflict. Okay, so yeah, we'll be doing all those invasions next episode. Did great in the sea, guys. Very happy with our, our progress in uh, in the naval conflict. So I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you guys on the next one. And thanks for watching.